This is a pendulum. It swings back and forth from where it's attached to the ceiling, and I want to understand how this pendulum moves as a function of time. So, uh, to be clear, it's attached with a rigid rod of length L, maybe a metal rod or something. There's a point mass M down at the end, and the rod is massless, and it swings back and forth with, we're ignoring air resistance, ignoring any friction or anything. We just want to figure out that angle as a function of time for this pendulum. Uh, now, it's going to be hard to find an explicit function of time, it turns out. Maybe impossible to find a closed form explicit function, but what we really want to be able to work this out, we want to get to the point where we have a differential equation for the motion of the pendulum. A differential equation, you know, an equation relating derivatives of theta uh, to features of the problem that we'll, we could in principle solve as a function of time, numerically if nothing else. So, okay, how am I going to do that? I have recorded a previous video where I solved this using Newton's laws. Um, it took a whole board and I kind of crammed things in, but it, it, I got it done. We solved it. I want to now ins uh, instead use the principles of Lagrangian mechanics to solve this problem uh, and, and to figure it out. And Lagrangian mechanics, as you may know, is the idea that we define a Lagrangian, which traditionally is written as, I, I'm going to write it in the usual notation that advanced mechanics books use, uh, T minus V, where this is kinetic energy and this is potential energy. So uh, T for kinetic energy is a little unfamiliar to beginning physics students, but it's what we use in, in all this. Uh, I know that T is equal to one-half mv squared for a point mass like this, and I know that V, gravity is the only potential energy in this story, V is just mgy. Uh, I said y here, I guess I should have been explicit, saying that I've defined some coordinates, x horizontal, y vertical, and just for convenience I've chosen the origin to be the pivot point up at the top. So uh, these are my kinetic and potential energy. I need to write these in terms of theta, because theta is my one coordinate, my generalized coordinate in this system. And so I want to write uh, y and, and speed in terms of that coordinate, well, to do that, I guess what I want to do is first write down what x and y are in terms of theta. So x equals L, let's see, x is here, L times the sine of theta, and y equals, it, it's negative, negative L cosine theta. So those are my x and y. And so V, I'm going to be able to put in just minus MGL cosine theta. That's going to be my V when I put that in. So I know that already. For, this, for the, my capital V, my, my potential energy. For my speed, I'm going to need to know the derivatives of these. So let's go ahead and take those derivatives. Um, if this is X, then DX DT is... I'm going to use the notation x dot for that because it's a nice convenient notation to use and it's much more compact than dx dt. x dot is equal to, I've got to use the chain rule, right? L is a constant times the derivative of sine of theta is cosine theta. And then chain rule times d theta dt, or just theta dot. Cool. And this one, y dot, so I dy dt is y dot, and that's equal to, let's see, negative cosine, derivative of that is positive sine, so L sine theta times theta dot. Again, chain rule going on there. Let me do a you know, reasonableness check here. If my theta is in the position I've drawn it here, if that's positive theta, and theta dot is positive, say it's increasing, that would mean this is swinging upward, and that is a speed up and to the right, both positive. Yep, these are both positive in that situation. So, okay, I feel good. These, these seem reasonable. So, what is my V, then? Uh, v, I could have even done this a different way, couldn't I? I could have, I, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and write it down. This is fine. <laughs> I'm just doing this as best I can. Uh, I want V squared. V squared is x dot squared plus y dot squared. That's what speed is. This is the Pythagorean theorem for speed. Cool. So that's going to be L squared, cosine squared, theta, theta dot squared, plus L squared, sine squared theta, 
times theta dot squared. That's a squared, really. Theta dot squared. And cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So this is really just L squared theta dot squared. And honestly, I could have guessed this without even going through all this process, because I happen to know that uh, speed equals L times theta dot. That's uh, for circular motion. Since this is constrained to be a fixed thing, I could have just said V equals L theta dot, which is the same as L omega, something like that. that that's a, that's a R, V equals R omega is a known thing in things. So I could have just, I could have gotten straight here without even doing the derivatives there. Okay, anyway, I've got this. I can write down my Lagrangian now. My Lagrangian, after all this, is going to be L equals one half m l squared theta dot squared minus um, minus m g y, but that means plus m g l cosine theta. That's my Lagrangian. And what do I do with it? I mean, I've said that I'm going to use Lagrangian mechanics to do this, but how do I use it? The, once I have my Lagrangian written down, I write down the Euler-Lagrange equations. And the Euler-Lagrange equations say that uh, this whole thing equals zero, d by dt of dl d theta dot minus dl d theta. The derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the coordinate is negative. And the time derivative of the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the time derivative of the coordinate, theta dot, is positive. Those have to combine to zero. All right, what's this give me? Well, dl d theta is just, where am I? dl d theta, there's only one theta here. Remember, theta and theta dot are treated as independent variables in this formulation. dl d theta is just zero minus minus m g length sine theta and dl d theta dot equals, this term goes away here, uh, derivative of theta dot squared is 2 theta dot, so this is going to be m l squared theta dot. And then d by dt of that, the time derivative, of this is just, those are constants, m l squared theta double dot. All right, so the Euler-Lagrange equations then tell me that 0 equals uh, that, m l squared theta double dot minus this, so plus m g l sine of theta. Or if I want to solve for the second derivative, I could solve for that by dividing by ml squared and subtracting, and I get that theta double dot equals, what is this? This is minus g over l times sine of theta. That is our differential equation for theta. That is, in fact, the exact same thing that I got using Newton's laws. Uh, except using Newton's laws, I had a much more crammed board. I had a lot more steps. I had to take a lot more time derivatives, chain, you know, product rules and things. Uh, this, for me, once you know the Euler-Lagrange equations, this is a much smoother, cleaner process than the Newtonian case. And of course, we get to the same point here, where for small angles, sine of theta is approximately theta. So this is approximately minus g over l theta. And we find that this is a harmonic oscillator in that limit. This is when theta is much less than one radian. At approximate harmonic oscillator, we find that theta then is approximately, what is it, some amplitude times the cosine, for example, of omega t plus phi, or some constant phi, and all we know is that omega squared has to equal g over l, and that will solve this. This is a general, one, one form of a general solution to that differential equation, but to the approximate differential equation. And point is, this was a process, and I felt actually pretty good about it every step, away, step of the way through. It was, I didn't feel like I was drowning in algebra at any point. It was relatively straightforward steps each point along the way. 
So that is how you solve the motion of a pendulum, a single pendulum, using the Euler-Lagrange equations.